The Colts invested early draft capital on edge defenders Quiddy Pay and Dio Odangbo last year. Today, we'll talk to someone who has trained both stud players to see what we should expect in year two. This and much more on today's edition of Locked On Colts. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Colts fans, thank you so much for tuning in and making us your number one listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Jake Arthur, joined as always by my partner, Zach Hicks, over there. Today, Zach sat down with defensive line trainer Eddie McGilbra, who has personally worked with Colts second-year defenders Quiddy Pay and Dio Adangbo, Hurricane Dio. (laughs) <laughs> Coach Eddie is going to share with us his thoughts, and then Zach and I will give you our own expectations for the pair in 2022. So I'm going to drop off this one. Uh, Zach handled this interview. so We fired Jake me... one segment. One segment yeah. we fired Jake. Yeah, you'll notice me being very quiet because I was <laughs> not there. Let's get to it. <laughs> Alrighty, Colts fans, as you can see, we kicked Jake off the show here, and I replaced him uh, with Eddie McGilvra, one of the best D-line coaches in the country. And and Eddie's a guy who, you know, I talked to him a lot last year about Quiddy Pay. And since then, I mean, you've gotten pretty big with the with the 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 coaching that you're doing in the offseason stuff, man. I mean, how's how how has all this been for you? And and who are some of your like, you know, top guys that you've trained before, just to give you some background before we start talking? Yeah, no, it's been really fun this offseason. I've been busier than normal, but uh, it's taken me some fun places in Dallas right now with a group of a bunch of veterans from a bunch of different teams. Obviously, a lot of Cowboy guys because they're all local. But, uh, you know, uh, Dio is out here right now. Uh, he was just with me in L.A. for about a week before coming out here. Um, but, you know, just uh, was with Quiddy all spring for about two months, uh, mixing in with some veterans out in Los Angeles from the Chargers and the Rams guys. Uh, so it's been fun, man. It's been a lot. Of, it's been a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the main reason why I brought you on here is because, I, you know, I've talked to you so many times about Quiddy Pay, Quiddy Pay, Quiddy Pay, Quiddy Pay. Uh, but now you got to work with Dio. And Dio is the guy that is kind of under the radar right now for a lot of Colts fans and, and, and Colts writers and stuff, because we didn't really get to see him last year at all. Uh, but from what you got to see of him, you know, out in L.A. and and just working with him, I mean, how did he look? He's extremely twitchy. It's like he's very sudden, you know, and um, being a guy that can rush from, you know, outside and inside. I think he's very versatile in that sense. And uh, fresh legs coming off of an injury. A lot of the times, you know, that'll that'll really that'll really show you, you know, how much you really want to be in this business. Um, Not being able to play almost a full year, only getting the end there a little bit. I think he played like maybe a little bit towards the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's he's really excited. He's been mixing in with a lot of big time veterans, um, just kind of picking and, and choosing what he sees, chopping it up with them, um, taking a couple things from everybody. But he's definitely the, the whole package, man. He's extremely strong at the point of attack and uh, he's a long body. He's got a lot of length and you can see why the Colts you know, took a shot on him early in the draft. Um, I've been impressed. I mean, the guy the guys that he works with, the guy, like pretty much everybody in this group here in Dallas has been like, yo, (laughs) a kid can go, you know? So um, so it's impressive. I think the the biggest thing that stood out to me was uh, Sheldon Rankins, who's with the Jets now, but you know, he's, he's a, I think going into his seventh year as a vet right now. Um, You know, we were at UCLA for a couple of days and, you know, I brought, I brought uh, Dio out um, and Sheldon was like, he was like young fella, like, (laughs) <laughs> you know what you're doing like it's right there so I think Colts fans should be really excited for him to have a healthy year you know yeah no and that's that's the biggest thing and I love that you said he's looking twitchy and he's looking quick and and obviously you know there's some videos and stuff that you've been posting uh on your social media and I think that that's 
one of the more interesting things for me because he kind of came into camp and in, in last off season, like looking bigger than what he did on film in college. I think he was like in the two eighties last year. Um, but is, is he kind of like around like two seventies now to tell you kind of what his weight's at or how he's, you know, what his process yeah, I think is. I think he said he was sitting like right around two seventy five, two eighty. Okay. Um, okay. He, he, you know, he doesn't look, he doesn't look it, man. He's he yeah. Holds it well. Um, I think it was, I was just surprised how, how twitchy he was for somebody so lank. You know, so lanky. Um, yeah, you know, no, his arms are. I think it was yeah. what it was like thirty-seven inches or something like that. Arms, are yeah, because he's 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 a long body. Yeah, yeah, and and so you got to work with Dio, you got to work with Quiddy. Um, you know, compared to kind of what you had with Quiddy, you know, Quiddy, you've had this rapport for so long with him. Uh, when you got a guy like Dio, how much was it like trying to get to? Okay, we're gonna do some things that kind of play to your strengths, play to what you want to do. Did you watch some film with Dio or kind of what was your whole process and stuff with him? So we have, we've been in actually, we've been in just social media conversations, you know, Instagram um, ever since he was a senior in uh, or at Vandy yeah. before he graduated. And, um, you know, I was always a fan of his game. You could see he jumps off with the, the film like right away um, with, with his suddenness. And uh, we, we just held conversation and eventually knew that we were going to connect. And then when we did, it was like, I remember I, we saw each other we walking up to the field and like, it was like that moment. It was like, finally, yeah. you know, it, was, it was cool. It was, it was a cool feeling. Um, we already had a little bit of chemistry from that, but um, you know, we haven't been able to get in the film room yet. I think that's something that, you know, eventually down the road further in his career as he, as he develops and starts getting into a more of a routine in his off seasons, mm-hmm. he'll, start to, he'll start to mix that in uh, like my other veterans do. But, you know, that's a that's a tough thing for um, for guys transitioning from rookie year to second year. Right. It's usually your your first actual taste of a, a true offseason um, as an NFL player. So you really try to figure out, you know, where I'm going to be in the spring or where I want to be in the summertime. Who do I want to work with? What do I want to get done? And I think once you find that routine and you're able to settle in a little bit, you're able to calm down and, and, and really focus on what you're trying to get better at. Uh, so I think – that'll come year two to three for him more so than this off season. Mm-hmm. I think this off season, he was just really trying to shake the dust off after not playing as much for a full year and uh, being able to be ready to go once training camp starts. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I talked a lot in the off season about how, you know, the Colts have Yannick, they have Quiddy pay, they have DeForest Buckner. And we've been pretty excited just looking at that group of guys, but we, we always were like, you know, they need that one more guy, you know, one more guy on, on passing downs, that can kind of come in and also be productive. I mean, for, from your work with Dio, do you think, you know, he can be that one more guy? Yeah. Dio is that guy, um, especially in the system that the Colts have, have transitioned to with the attacking front of, of mm-hmm. you know, like a couple wide nines, wide sevens, letting their defensive ends get vertical. And uh, they need those three tech, you know, those four tech pass rushers. And I think having, you know, I, we, it was funny because we were talking about slide protection Mm-hmm. And kind of where offenses like to set their slide to. And I looked at him and I was like, you're not going to ever get a slide, bro. Like you have a buck on the other side. I was like, so you need to take advantage of that. I was like, you should already know what's happening and set up your rushes from there. But yeah, to answer your question, man, he, he is that guy. Um, you know, if all goes well and he can stay healthy, I, I would, I would expect a pretty big year from him. Awesome. And then the last guy, obviously we always got to come back to Quiddy talk whenever I'm talking with you. And no I know I've, I've always got you saying great things about him and all my articles and stuff, but just for the people listening, for the people watching here on YouTube, what are your expectations for Quiddy pay uh, this season across from Yannick going into year two? I mean, he knows what's up. He know he knows like it's, it's time to go. He had a, he, he had left some opportunity on the, on the table last year, missed a couple sacks. I think his numbers would have been sitting right around like six to eight. Mm-hmm. You know, if he would have finished a couple more times, but I think he understands now. Like, it's time to go. He's really, really worked his ass off this off season more than ever, um, and it's showing. It's showing. He's in the best shape of his life. So, football is an interesting game, though. You know, a lot of it is luck. You know, so um, I'm expecting Pro Bowl type year for Quiddy. Uh, especially in the AFC, it's going to be a very high stacked um, pass rush group, as you can see from all the you know all the changes happening around, even in like the AFC West alone. Mm-hmm. So um, it's going to be tough for him to get that, but I think he has that in him. So you know we've talked a lot about it, and even the other day I was like, man, 
I was like, you just keep locked in, keep doing what you're doing. It's going to pay off. Awesome. Awesome. Eddie, I appreciate you jumping on the show. And it's the first time I think we've talked face to face, you know, we've been texting and calling each other. Yeah, for the last... phone calls, man. Yeah, I know. It's actually good to see a, see a face to the voice, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep growing all this. And, and, you know, I'm excited to see obviously the rest of the work you're doing this off season, but next off season with Dio again and with Quiddy again, and, and just more Colts guys get with you. Uh, I think it's, it's a great thing that you're kind of building that, kind of pipeline with Colts players right now. And then I think Colts fans are starting to see it too. And they're flooding to your, your Twitter stuff right there. You guys can follow Ed there on Twitter at D line coach Ed. Um, he posts a lot of videos of guys that he's working with and such. Um, but yeah, you know, coming up guys here on the locked on Colts podcast, Jake and I are going to dive into the games of Quay and Dio Dambo and talk about why these breakout seasons are probably going to happen. Yeah, that was a great sit down with my buddy Eddie there. Go follow him on Twitter at D line coach Ed. Uh, he's just outstanding and he's been working with Quiddy and Dio for quite a bit. Um, but before we get into our conversation about Quiddy and, and Dio Dambo, uh, let's talk about our good friend Dave. I mean, level with me, guys. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives where we were a little tight on cash, you know, especially with the COVID pandemic. We're kind of all a little tight on cash right now. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just a tough time. Uh, you know, maybe you can only afford to put a couple of gallons in your tank. Or you've got another save the date and wondering how you can afford that gift. That's where Dave can help. Dave is the banking app that can get you up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills, which that's where I'm at right now. It's just catch up on bills at this point. Oh, yeah. um, you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Always can call your buddy Dave. Uh, sign up for the extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. Future you will thank you. Now up next, we're going to discuss the Colts 2021 first round pick, Quiddy Pay, and what we might expect from him in his sophomore season. We heard from Coach Eddie, of course, but what do these two nerds think about it? <laughs> well, he had a pretty solid rookie season, uh, saw 638 snaps and started all 15 games that he appeared in. Uh, he had 32 tackles, including three for loss, uh, one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, and one pass breakup. As a pass rusher, he had four sacks, and then Pro Football Focus credited him, credited him with 28 quarterback hurries and then six other quarterback hits. Yeah. He uh, he was top five among rookies in pressures with 39, and he was top three among rookie edge defenders in pretty much everything. Yep. Um, so Zach, what, I mean, you're you're the big film guy, of course. What in your study of Quiddy from his rookie year, uh, what were some of his things he excelled in, and what were some of his kind of areas to clean up? Yeah, you know, I think Eddie said it best there at the end of the interview where. Quiddy was, what, half a second, maybe just a couple finishing plays from having like an eight-sack rookie season. I mean, he had a yeah. couple where he had guys in his grasp or just missed a sack. Uh, you know, we could have been talking about a guy in his rookie year having eight, nine sacks uh, if he were to finish some plays, which is always a thing with rookies. You know, it's it's always down to how you finish and, and stuff like that. But I think for the scheme that he was in, that Matt Eberflew scheme, that that's not really predicated on edge rushers, you know, getting sacks. It's kind of more about containing the quarterback in the pocket uh, and getting them if they try to escape. Uh, I think Quiddy Pay had an outstanding rookie season, especially in the later half of the year. You know, early in the year, you could definitely see, you know, he, he was dealing with some injury. He wasn't 100%. He was still kind of getting adjusted to playing in the NFL. Uh, that second half of the year, though, he, he was playing really, really good football. And that's where you saw those pressures start coming up. You saw the hits coming up. You saw him get a couple sacks. Uh, and I think a, another really big thing, and, and this isn't me trying to even bash on Matt Eberflus at all, because, you know, Matt Eberflus does, does a lot for these young pass rushers. I mean, a guy like Quiddy Pay was a good run defender in college, but he got even more experience as a run defender because of what Matt Eberflus asked of these defensive ends. Uh, so he's going to come into this scheme with Gus Bradley, where he's a really good run defender. He's got the experience as a run defender, but now he gets to be unleashed as a pass rusher. And now he gets to be put out in those wide nines and, and crash downhill against, you know, single, single blocks from, from offensive tackles. So I think uh, year one was definitely a great building block for him. I would, I wouldn't go as far to say, you know, he's a, he was a really good player. He was a great player in year one. 
Uh, but it was a great building block and for a guy to take the next step in year two. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with that. Of, of course, the stats aren't eye popping by any means. But yeah. He's definitely one of those players you have to look beyond the box score. Uh, you know, when they drafted him, they knew he played hard, had a high motor, was a pretty decent run defender. Raw as a pass rusher, but with room to grow. And I, th I think you pretty much saw all that as a rookie. I thought he played decently well as a run defender, like you said, uh, under Matt Eberflus's scheme. Lots of hustle. Uh, he was there to to be right there on the back end of some plays that not a lot of other guys were. My my biggest memories from his rookie season were hustle plays, to be honest right. with you. Right. Maybe a sack here or there. Um, but like you and Coach Eddie said, he probably is just a, a fingernail away from racking up a few more sacks. And I think you and I did say expectations for him last year, probably about six, seven sacks going into it. So I think I finishing said four with four. Five. I have to say, I think oh, I said well, four then you, yeah. well, then but, you nailed it. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just when, when you look at his college film, so much of him, he was so held back by that scheme. And then when you come to the Colts where I'm not saying Matt Eberflus' scheme like 100% holds back defensive ends, but it's very different than what you're going to get from like a Gus Bradley, where it's like Gus Bradley as a defensive end, you get after it. You know, you are, mm -hmm. you're getting back there. You are, you're firing off on these passing plays and you're trying to get sacks where Matt Eberflus, you know, you're trying to contain a lot and that's kind of where you're going to be. You know, you might be playing as like a five tech on passing downs, even or as a seven tech and just kind of containing that outside shoulder. Uh, so he's always kind of been restricted a little bit. Uh, so that's why I thought, you know, going into year one, expecting eight, nine, 10 sacks was going to be a little outrageous because he just wasn't going to be in a scheme that was going to really do that for him. And also he came mm -hmm. from a place in Michigan where he was mostly just a run defender. I mean, he he had some great moments, but he really wasn't unleashed at Michigan either. No. And that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you, you talked about being in the the new system with Gus Bradley and how expectations mm -hmm. and role is going to be different. Uh, now, of course, when, when Gus Bradley first came in, we were kind of thinking, um, you know, maybe Quiddy might be the might be the uh, the Leo with any of Taekwon or Dio Dangbo or someone maybe being the big end. Mm -hmm. Then they go and trade for Yannick and Gakwe, who has been a Leo for Gus Bradley previously, even as recently as last year. Yep. And that kind of kicks Quiddy over to the starting left end. Although uh, Quiddy has said, you know, he expects there to be a, a lot more both ends lining up you know, wide nine, things like that. So you may not have that definition. It may just be two skilled pass rushers at, at edge. It, it's not necessarily going to be so defined. Uh, but with that being said, what are your expectations for him under Bradley in 2022? You know, I, I think you have to have higher expectations. You know, I, Eddie just said that he is expecting, you know, a Pro Bowl type season or a, a, a season where it could be a Pro Bowl uh, type of production where yes, it's going to be tough to be a pro bowler. I don't even need him to get that high this year. You know, I just need consistent pressure. Like that's all, that's all I'm asking. I'm asking for a very healthy, you know, pass rush, wind rate, uh, hurries, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and just kind of, again, build on what we saw in rookie year. So rookie year, it was what four sacks, four QB hits. Uh, I think it was like 30, what'd you say again? 38 pressures, right? Uh, 39 total pressures, 39 yeah. total pressures. Yeah. So just see those numbers all kind of come up a little bit. You know, again, mm -hmm. I don't need I don't need 15, 16 sacks or anything like that. But no. if you can get in there around eight, nine, 10 sacks and kind of be like, you don't even have to be the first or second most productive pass rusher on this defense this year because they have Yannick, because they have DeForest Buckner. Just be a consistent presence on that other side. Don't we can't get into those those situations last year where the Colts weren't just going like one quarter or two quarters. They were going games at a time where they were not yeah. touching quarterbacks. I mean, it, That's so some, frustrating. Yeah. 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 And some of it was scheme. Some of it was underperformance of, of some players, but at the end of the day, the Colts were one of the worst teams in football in terms of pressure last year. Uh, you want to see that number come up and you want Quiddy pay to be a huge part of that. So, I mean, expectations wise from everything I've seen and heard this off season from the change to a very defensive end friendly scheme. I mean, I, I think, you set it around six, seven, eight sacks and, and you kind of go from there in terms of the other metrics that you want to see improve. Yeah. So I think that's fair. Honestly, just turning some of those pressures into a couple more finishes, you know, ma maintaining consistent disruption and just turning some of those pressures into sacks would be good, you know, because finishing, I believe was another knock on him. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's, that's kind of the gist on Quiddy pay. Up next, we're going to dive in on Pay's running mate and a guy with a lot of expectations this season in Dio Adangbo. 
First, though, it's time to lock in some bets. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. If you're into season award betting, guys, uh, you ought to know that Colts defenders Darius Leonard, DeForest Buckner, and Stephon Gilmore are all on BetOnline's Defensive Player of the Year wagers. Uh, Darius Leonard's at plus 3,300, Buckner at plus 8,000, and Gilmore at plus 10,000. I think and Gilmore's Buckner- already... I think Buckner is an interesting one there. I think it is, with, is. This scheme, with this scheme. I mean, last time he played in a scheme like this was with the Niners. So I, I, I'm interested in that one. And I think you're about to say Gilmore too. Gilmore is an interesting yeah. one too. Yeah. Gilmore's been there before at plus 10,000. He's, he's won defensive player of the year before. Yeah. So it's not super far fetched. And this kind of defense could maybe give him some, some opportunities to get high turnover numbers, which is one of the biggest things voters look at. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he- head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. Now we're going to discuss the Colts' 2021 second round pick, Dio Odengbo, as we mentioned. And of course, you heard Zach talk with uh, with Coach Eddie about him. He, of course, started his rookie season behind the eight ball. He tore an Achilles last January preparing for the Senior Bowl. It didn't really phase the Colts, who were absolutely smitten with him, and that includes yeah. general manager Chris Ballard. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the with the first pick uh, series and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, but Ballard said he had to be talked out of taking him in round one if if Cordy <laughs> Pay wasn't going to be there, honestly. Uh, but yeah, uh, Odengbo was on the NFI list through camp because of that uh, Achilles injury, and he didn't debut until week eight of the regular season. By then, you know, he got action in 10 games. I think it was 173 snaps, uh, just six tackles and one forced fumble. Uh, But as a pass rusher, he had a half sack, 10 hurries, and another quarterback hit. Uh, That sack he had, of course, was the game ceiling sack against uh, Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. Uh, But yeah, Zach, kind of the same thing with with Pay. What did you see on uh, Dio's limited film from last year? Honestly, it's hard to even grade any of that. Because he mm-hmm. wasn't, he wasn't Dio. You know, if, if anyone who watched his college film and then you watched his rookie season, you could tell he wasn't Dio. You know, he didn't have an off-season program. He didn't really get to go through all the motions with with the Colts before the season, outside of just kind of being there. Uh, and then when he got on the field, you know, he he just didn't look as explosive. He didn't look as as strong or as overwhelming as what he did in college. And and I think that was kind of to be expected. Again, coming off that Achilles injury, it's a big injury uh, for a defensive lineman. And then you just kind of get thrown out there for a couple snaps every game. It's really hard to get a rhythm going. So, I mean, if you're, if you're judging him at all whatsoever off of his rookie season, I think that's, that's kind of like malpractice, honestly, because it's just, that's yeah. just not who he is. Uh, the bigger test is going to be this year because this year is kind of like his rookie season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, last year was kind of just about seemed like getting his feet wet and yeah. just getting him on the field and seeing what, what he could do. Uh, it was just like a complete introductory season. You're almost not expecting anything other than give it effort and, you know, just do, do your role, essentially. Yeah. Um, you can get into some of the extracurricular stuff, you, you know, kind of thinking ahead of the game now that physically he should be fine. Um, I, I thought you saw the hustle. You, you saw a little violence. Um, you just kind of saw him doing his job, but the production wasn't there. Not a lot of explosion, things like right. that. Right. And I mean, so asking you what he could clean up in 2022, it's hard to, it's really hard to say that too, because you don't know. I mean, you don't know what was the injury and what was what, um, but he did talk to the media this spring. He he acknowledged, you know, he definitely wasn't himself last year. And, you know, even though the Achilles was kind of back, the rest of your body has to overcompensate right. for what was missing and things like that. And he mentioned, you know, he's made a ton of strides and he feels like himself now. He feels like he's going to be able to show who Dio Odengbo is uh, in 2022. And that's really exciting. 
Um, as for his role, assuming he continues to progress, uh, what would you think his role might be this year? I think it's going to be that fourth pass rusher on, on uh, pass rushing downs. I mean, as long as everything goes well in camp and he looks good. I mean, again, we have Eddie's videos that we're playing at the very beginning of this. Uh, he looks good like he's moving. And honestly, the best thing that Eddie said in the interview, which got me like kind of perking up, which you could, you guys could probably see there in the video is when he told me Dio is around 275, 280, you know, right now, that's great for him. Cause I think last year at camp, he was like high 280s. I, I believe that's when he came in or like 285, 286. Uh, so to see him a little bit lower there, a little leaner, looking very twitchy and, and quick, uh, I think that's huge for for Dio. And, and that's going to be big for the role that he needs to have in this defense because with this defense, Yannick Nagakwe is always going to be out there in pass rushing downs. DeForest Buckner is always going to be out there, obviously. Quiddy Pay is going to be out there a lot on pass rushing downs. But who is that fourth guy? Is it Taekwon Lewis coming off of his major injury? Is it Dio coming off of his major injury and, and you know, rookie season that wasn't really a rookie season? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who gets those snaps. And if Dio can have a strong camp and, and be the Dio that we saw in college, those are his snaps. And he's going to always be one-on-one. -on -one. He's never going to get a slide protection his way, just like just like Eddie said there at the beginning. Uh, so, I mean, expectations-wise for that, anything he does is kind of gravy at this point. <laughs> I mean, because the other three guys are going to be the big dogs. But, you know, he could play a pretty big role on passing downs. Uh, this year, being a, being a one on one guy uh, who's going to be in like a three tech or a four tech rushing rushing next to DeForest Buckner. I mean, he's always going to have one on one opportunities. You just got to clean up those sacks. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. His role is what he makes it this year, because uh, I mean, his main competition is Tyquan Lewis and Ifiani Odenigbo. Odenigbo, there's Brooks on those passing downs. You know, like a little yeah. bit, but. It, uh, if you can't beat out a six round rookie, I, I mean, <laughs> right. might have yeah. issues here. exactly. Yeah. I mean, Brooks, like you said, six round rookie, primarily going to be three tech, but, um, Odenigbo, they didn't sign him to eat away at Dio's Dio right. snaps or pay snaps. And then Taekwon, he's coming over one of the most difficult injuries for an NFL player to come back from. And even though they do like him, Again, are they really going to give him a ton of playing time over over Dio? So right, right. I his role is what he makes it. If if he looks good, then they're going to give him a, a bunch of snaps. I would think he'll be that that next guy up in the rotation. Did you see what I did there? Though I got Curtis Brooks into the podcast again. Of course, the Curtis Brooks <laughs> podcast featuring Kylan Granson. This is Kylan's first mention of the day. We had to do it to him. So <laughs> this podcast, this uh, Locked On Colts podcast episode is brought to you by Curtis Brooks. Curtis Brooks, the best rookie the Colts have ever had. On that note, we're clearly going off the rails. So I think that is it for us today, guys. Uh, Locked On Colts will be back with you next week. Zach and I will continue our breakdowns and previewing training camp. If you liked our pass catchers debate from earlier in this week, we'll bring you another one of those as well. If you didn't listen to it yet, um, shoot. I mean, nothing's going to interfere with that and make that old news for several weeks. So go ahead and, and get into that. Yep. And guys, social media, go on there, follow at Zach Hicks too. I don't really care if you follow the other ones, but at Zach Hicks too <laughs> on Twitter, that's the one you got to follow. But yeah, Jake Arthur NFL right there underneath <laughs> him. If you're watching the video at Lockdown Colts on Twitter, Facebook, we're going to start getting those pages up running. And then obviously again on YouTube, guys, if you guys are not watching on YouTube, you are missing out on some horribly cringy stuff that we are throwing in these videos, <laughs> including my weird transitions that, that I'm throwing in and, and all these other things. So yeah, go follow us on YouTube, get those subscribers up. Um, we'll interact and have fun with you guys over there as well. But uh, yeah, give us all those shout outs on social media and obviously rate, review, subscribe uh, wherever you listen to your podcast. Yep. And thanks again, guys, for making Locked On Colts your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. I think we all know that. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.